Hey friends, you probably heard the exciting news that the Lord has raised up Gabe Garcia to serve as the new associate pastor here at Christ Community Church in Brawley. And so on January 14th, we actually had a meet and greet luncheon after our Sunday services so that we could all get to know Gabe Garcia and his family a little bit more. And we recorded that interview and we wanted to show that to you at this time. We do want to let you know before you enjoy the conversation that there were a few technical difficulties in the recording, but we really believe that you're going to enjoy the conversation nonetheless. So with that being said, we encourage you to watch the rest of this interview and let's bring you into the conversation now. Let's start out with some easy ones. Are you ready? We'll kind of work our way up, kind of like a good workout. We're going to warm up here. So first... I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> now your nervousness makes me nervous. You can do some stretches. All right. They, they won't bite. They love you already. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's do it. See, there you go. Proves it. Okay, easy one. Favorite meal, food and drink included? Mm -hmm. My mom says that ever since I was like three, my favorite meal has been uh, flautas. Flautas. flautas yeah. yeah. She said that ever since I was a kid, I could put away a whole dozen. Now, how are we fixing these up? What's on them? Because you can't just have them straight like that. Well, it's just it's what is it? Just cabbage and that so and the sauce and yeah. What else do you put on them? I don't right? know. Simple, simple. What is it? Crema, yeah, crema more beef. Yeah, more beef. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess there are different ways to do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. There's no one way. Okay. Favorite place you've ever been to? Um, <laughs> Crest Community Church, Brawley. <laughs> yeah, by far. Well, that's sad. No. You yeah, broaden your horizons. <laughs> Uh, we, we honestly love where we just came from. We spent hmm. six years living in, in Bedford, Indiana, and we love it there. And, uh, that is so far our favorite place to have been, to have visited besides grass community, probably. Oh my gosh. Right. That's good. Indiana is beautiful. Um, we were there obviously just recently and it was very cold, so I wouldn't do well in the winter time, but beautiful, beautiful place. They actually have seasons. It's very nice. They, it's not like our trees and leaves where they just go from green to dead. They actually <laughs> change colors and, you know. Where would you love to visit? Uh, eventually, I'd really love to go to Israel. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amen. It'd be, it'd, it'd be, it was something I've always wanted to do. And uh, who knows? Soon enough. I should have just gone with Walt. I didn't know he was gone. Well, they were, and then a war broke out. Right. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, it kind of got complicated. I know. This yeah. is like the third time they've had to reschedule. I feel bad for... Or maybe I shouldn't go with Walt. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Maybe you should go with somebody else. It's cursed at this point. Um, yeah, Israel, obviously life-changing, was there for three months, and even that was just overwhelming. Many times people will go for a two-week thing, two-day travel, 10-day tour, two-day travel back, and even that's like, oh my gosh, there's just so much. Okay, top three favorite Christian books, besides the Bible, of course. Um, uh, there's this book I've been recommending for Sean to read for years, and he still hasn't read it. Um, I've read some of your recommendations. Have you read uh, The Master's Plan of Evangelism? Yes. Okay, never mind. All right, well, uh, Robert Coleman wrote, wrote that book in the 70s, and he just highlighted how everything Jesus did was intentional, and uh, and he highlighted how we should live our life like Jesus, which is not new to any of us, but he just, even from who he ate with and what he did and what he said, everything was so intentional. I love that. I love that book. Um, read it a few years ago. Uh, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It's by a Christian author who just talks about being a workaholic. And it's not just it's not just working a lot at work. It's how we sometimes always want to be doing something, fidgeting with something. If you're the type of guy that likes to be in the garage, you're done with work and you just got to go work on something, fix something. Looking at you, Doug. Uh, yeah. That's his father-in-law. Yeah. And, uh, it's not just some random. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some guy out there named Looking Doug. at you, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just how, you know, even in the life of Jesus, he calls us to just rest and be present and be with our people. And so that book spoke out to me a lot. And the last one, uh, Tale of Three Kings, is about the story of, uh, of um, Saul and David and Absalom and kind of the tragedy, but also the, the, the good and the bad parts of leadership. And uh, that book, that book's, I just read it recently as well, and it's 
it's uh, meant a lot for me to me. So I remember reading that one in college, and that was impactful. That one stood out to me too. Top three Christian leaders or influences in your life, Fernie. Yeah, see, Fernie, Alex, <laughs> Sean. <clears throat> there you go. Wow. Um, uh, Craig Rochelle is one that I'd like to, for many years, been listening to his stuff and um, reading some of his books. But uh, just the type of guy that he is, his church started the Bible app, which was such a crazy, monumental thing. and Half a billion downloads now. Right. And he's just a cool guy, and he has a really cool podcast. I love listening to everything that he does. Um, John Mark Comer, who wrote that book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he has a lot of books, and he's he's got a cool story, if you guys ever want to look into that. And the last one's um, my former youth pastor, Ozzy, Ozzy Ortiz. He was a youth pastor at First Christian in El Centro. And uh, he taught me early on just, I, th- I think Ozzy's a great speaker, communicator, leader, but um, what I've learned more about him was none of those things. It's just he's just very intentional. To this day, he, I've been out of youth group 10 years. He's still one of my first calls if something happens, if I ha- need advice, if I'm just going through something. And, um, and he's available. And uh, he's, just, he's just, he and his wife have meant a lot to me and my wife. So, so I, I'd put him in there. Top three for sure. Ozzy's a great guy. And <clears throat> his wife, April. And if you didn't know Ozzy, not only is he a great uh, father, pastor, dad, but he is a barista extraordinaire. I mean, he's like the coffee standard, literally went to Italy to right Italy yeah. to get certified and, and Craig Rochelle love his stuff, especially regarding leadership. And obviously it's not just you, but you have a family. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your family and how, uh, how and when did you and Brittany meet and how long you guys been married? Tell us about that love story. So I'm here over there's my wife, Brittany, and my son, Gideon. Gideon, say what's up. Yeah. Juice. He wants juice. And, uh, and uh, my in-laws, Westmoreland's, and uh, other in-laws, Westmoreland's. Brittany and I met at youth group uh, about 10 years ago. Um, so we met at youth group. Classic youth group romance, kind of. Watch out, Fernie. Watch out. <laughs> They're not there just for Jesus. <laughs> no, we were friends. We were friends for years. We were friends for years before, and uh, we served together and and um, led at First Christian together, and just got to know each other. And we've been married now for five years, seven months, seventeen days. Nice. Good job. I always have that right here. I did not think of that right before this. Good job. Yeah. That's it. Was there, was there How old's Gideon? Oh, uh, Gideon just turned two, and he weighs like forty-five pounds. <laughs> That's true. He is a small tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's dense. He's gonna be a good fullback. Mm-hmm. So, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your upbringing. Where were you born? What was your upbringing like? Christian background? Not. Okay, it's a lot of questions. In, in well, you're one. a smart guy. Here we go. I was born in Mexicali. Um, back in 1995, and we were there for a couple of years. We moved over when I was like four, and we've been uh, around the valley ever since. We've lived in Calexico, Heber, El Centro, Hopeville, all over. This is we counted. This is probably the 25th time I've moved since I was since I was a little kid, and it's been a lot. Um, but we've been around this area, and our upbringing just. Catholic, but maybe <laughs> mm. <laughs> we'd go to church on you know Christmas, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, and and that was about it. But in uh, high school, my mom started going to church. She started going to to a small church in Calexico, um, first First Baptist Church in Calexico, and and she would go there, and she kind of dragged me and my brothers every Sunday, and she, I mean literally would drag us there. We I wanted nothing to do with with church. But after years of, of her praying and, and, and seeking and asking all her friends to pray and, and just the way God kind of plans everything out, um, there was just that YFC banquet where I, I had shared um, part of my story with some people there that um, I heard the gospel for the first time at an event that Youth for Christ had in my high school. I went to Southwest High School. 
and they had an event. One of the youth pastors just shared the gospel, and he just, I, I may have heard it a few times before, but the way he shared it just spoke to me, and it's like he was talking to me, and I got to talk to him after, and I prayed with him, and I started going to youth group, and then from then on. I, so it was that campus life that you heard the gospel, mm-hmm. received, prayed with a youth leader, oh, at a fifth quarter. Yep. Praise God. Yeah, shout out to Campus Life, mm-hmm. Youth for Christ. We love the work that they do. They just recently had a 30th year anniversary, and that was really, really special to get to be a part of, see the different eras. That was the the theme, the eras throughout the years. Very cool. Now, so that's how you were introduced to Jesus. You responded to the gospel at the fifth quarter, and you said that you had been nominally Catholic and kind of heard this message a little bit here and there growing up, but it was really at Campus Life in high school. What age were you or what grade were you? I was a sophomore. Uh, how old are you when you're a sophomore? 16? 15. 15. When I heard the gospel, but even then, it didn't really take... You know how they say that there's when you hear the gospel, you can be like Peter or Paul. It can be radically you're transformed and changed, and that was not me. It really, I heard the gospel and I, under, and I understood it, but it took years of, we went to a few different churches and we, I tried to, you know, I was in different friend groups and still we were kind of going through a lot of things in life with my family. And uh, it took a couple of years, but my senior year, so about two years later, is when I started going to, uh, I joined a different youth group. That's where I met, the first person I met at that church was Doug. I went to youth group there, and I got in, I got involved, and uh, that's when I really started, you know, turning my life around and really serving and understanding what serving meant and understanding what what putting your old life behind behind was about. I think before I just knew about it, but I didn't apply it. Kind of like what you were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. We know the information, but I didn't really start applying it until a few years later. So, so I when people ask me when did you start walking with the Lord, Mm. I would say it was around my senior year. I was like 18 years old when I really started taking things seriously. So you got saved sophomore year of high school at fifth quarter at uh, Southwest, and then you got plugged into a local church in the El Centro area. And what made you want to get involved with ministry? You talked about getting involved serving. What did that look like? Why did you want to do that? Why I wanted to be in ministry? Mm -hmm. I just was a result of many people who prayed who did random acts of kindness towards their family for really no good reason, for no reason other than just sharing the love of Christ. That's a good reason. <sighs> yeah. Well, see, I didn't, I didn't understand that back <laughs> sure, then. You sure. You know, like, why would you do that? And I, I saw a lot of those things growing up. Why would people do that? Um, my senior year, we, my mom would make uh, tamales. That's how we, that's kind of how we survived. And Christmas season, we were making uh, a lot of them, thousands of them. I remember. Yeah, it was like a sweatshop. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it was one evening. These ladies from our church just knocked on the door in our apartment in Heber, and I opened the door and I'm, I look at them and I'm like, "What are you doing here?" And they walk in, this group of ladies with with a full on uh, like a set to make a Christmas dinner and gifts for for me and my mom and my siblings and you know by name like it had their names and and they just left this this meal and all these gifts and they say hey we just wanted to let you know we love you and and merry christmas and they walk away oh that's awesome yeah and and it was like a tornado like they came in left stuff walked away i'm like what <laughs> what's going on and and the why you know yeah. that oh just why would they do that and it was just it because because jesus you know mm. and a lot of people did that in my life a lot of people show kindness to my family through all the need that we have and and um uh, that's the type of stuff that that uh I learned from them made me think, man, if if uh, if I'm gonna do anything, I want to I want to love people like that and I want to where whatever church I'm at, I want us to have that culture that mm-hmm. we bless people and, and they may think what for and no reason, just just you know, in the name of Jesus. So that stood out to me. Little things like that stood out to me all the time. To a lot of people that have just blessed us. Mm-hmm. The Westmoreland took us on vacation all the time. Why did you take a bunch of <laughs> snotty teenagers on your on your trips? Or why why would uh, why would other people let us in their homes? Why would other people do these things? It's just because community, Jesus, and um, and that that's why I'm here now. That's what I want us to do in Brawley is to be that type of people. That type Amen. Of Amen. Well, to yeah. 
Well, the fast forward a little bit. So you got saved sophomore year, started really walking with the Lord, getting plugged in, serving senior year, kind of getting more mature in your walk with Christ. And so now, uh, kind of big picture since then, tell us a little bit about some of your work experience, your ministry experience, work experience being outside of, you know, a quote unquote local church or something like that. What have you done up to this point? <laughs> um, because I know you're multi-talented, lots of gifts, lots of experiences. Someone's I, at the door. You can uh, you can say that or just say I'm really fidgety and I need to be doing something all the time. I worked at my home church for a couple of years at First Christian. I was I was like the tech director, tech assistant. I was like a less good Alex at First Christian. I did that for a couple of years. I worked at a construction company at a wood shop it was a wood shop construction company and that was really cool I learned a lot of things there I worked at uh, Westmoreland Ranch I had to work there for seven months to to earn the right to marry Brittany um, that sounds awfully biblical yeah it's better than seven years yeah, yeah. it's use, better than use, getting the old switcheroo after yeah, that a lot of grace <laughs> yeah <laughs> good thing you only had one daughter <laughs> there you go well well it could have been worse yeah could have been a brother so, so, uh, just Brody. Bible jokes, Sean, stop it. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm getting out of hand. I'll stop. Uh, so I worked at the, uh, I worked at a wood shop and at a ranch. I did like, it feels like 10 years of night school Bible college with Sean. It really was like three, but it just felt like forever. Sorry. Um, I, um, a little bit of context. I'm going to pause there. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so fall of 2014, we started a uh, Calvary Chapel Bible College in El Centro. So when I was going through Bible College, it started in fall of 2012. Uh, I've had this, I guess, uh, pattern that I'll go and God will do something in my life and be like, this is great. Everyone should experience this. And so went to Bible college, came back to the Valley, and like, we need to start a Bible college. Same thing happened with the apologetics conference. I went to one. I was like, this is great. We in the Valley should do this. So then started doing that. Went to a pro-life thing, came back. We should do a pro-life conference. I so started doing that. Um, and so anyways, when we started our first semester, fall of 2014, uh, we ran for four years, had about 100 students, many of whom graduated and went off to ministry. Uh, our our uh, database system that we used was called GradeLink. You remember GradeLink? And so GradeLink, it was like G0001. He was the first registered student in the, uh, in the system. And uh, so anyways, that's when we really started getting to know each other. And when you look back, you ever think, who, who looked at 21-year-old Sean and said, this guy should run a Bible college? 20. 20, yeah. Yeah. Man. I know. Big steps of faith that my current church leaders at the time took. Um, Needless learned- to say, for 10 years, I've been doing stuff with Sean. So I've been learning from him and, and, and growing and being challenged by him. So honestly, to me, working here, getting to do this with Sean is, mm. is a great, great honor. So, yeah. And I did that for a couple of years. Bible college, it was awesome. And... Um, then I interned at a, you know another church. I got a job at the place I just came from in Bedford, Indiana. I was a youth pastor there for six years, and we loved it. I learned a lot. Made a big impact. And I hope so. I hope so. I hasn't fallen <laughs> apart, you know. So started a network there. Yeah, yeah. We had you know youth pastors network, and and uh, we we did a lot of cool things in in the name of the Lord and. And we were grateful for it, but just as you know, years went on, and we just felt the tug to come back home, and um, and this opportunity came, and and we just felt like it was right, and we saw a lot of things lining up, and and we we took it, and uh, and we're here now. Amen. So. Well, hey, what are you most excited about as you begin to serve the Lord with us here at Christ Community Brawley? Many things, obviously, but the one that stands out the most is just because Carlos was just here, is mm. City Serve, is to get to serve with you guys. Already, as soon as City, uh, he, he ended and you mentioned that I was going to be running, and I already had some people come and say, like, hey, we're excited to, to work with City Serve and reach the community. And I just met with Carlos a few days ago, and we, he showed me the warehouse, and we're already planning mm-hmm. about, here's how we're going to do, here's mm-hmm. what we're going to do, here's how we're going to bless people. And, and from afar, I've been seeing how this church is a church that serves and loves their people well, and 
and I was excited about that to to be in a place where people are ready and excited to to mobilize. You know, we mm-hmm. just and we have avenues. We have yeah. community cleanups and city serve and whatever else we can think of. And I just know that there's people here that are ready to to move and and that's exciting, yeah. you know, to be in a place like that. And you play such a crucial role. You're going to play such a crucial role here. You know, when we first started back in our little cute church on Jones Street, if you guys remember Jones Street. And so things were younger and I was able to have more capacity and was out there doing as much as I could. But then as things grew and just seeing where the Lord's brought it to today, uh, my capacity only hits a wall and kind of goes so far. And so was really involved with things like City Serve and getting to make contact with families, be at their home, go and get the items, bring it back and just have multiple but uh, now Gabe's able to come alongside and that being one of a number of things that we're going to get to work together on because, gosh, there's so much work to be done just in this no, you keep adding to that list. little crazy. city. I know. It's awesome. <laughs> now, uh, before we take questions from you guys, is there anything that you would like to share with us before you step into the role of associate pastor here? Well, yeah, so far, just to, to thank you guys, because uh, we have felt so welcomed and and uh, loved on already, and and we're excited. Brittany and I just keep thinking about this place and this church, and um, to, f- to feel this excitement we have when we walk in on Sundays is different. We've been to different churches and worked at different churches and, and served at different capacities, and um, uh, Tori, to put you on the spot, you made that post, I think, yesterday about like something's happening in Broadway. It's like, I feel that too. And I think it's like everyone's feeling that too. Like something is going to happen here on the mm-hmm. north side. And and uh, and I feel that. And I think everyone does here too. There's this excitement when you come to church. Like something's about to happen and, and people are excited and ready to worship. And, and, um, and we noticed, I noticed. And uh, thank you for receiving us so well. And, and we're just really excited to do to get to work. Awesome. Hey friends, thanks again for watching the meet and greet luncheon interview that we had with the new associate pastor, Gabe Garcia. We encourage you to not only like and subscribe, but also to share this video and the channel with other people. And if you're listening to this on our podcast, we encourage you to share this podcast episode with a friend. With that being said, God bless. We love you. We look forward to serving you real soon.